Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here. And today is Watercolor Tuesday and we'll be working in our oh, little sketchbook here. It's not a watercolor paper book. It's just where I do sketches and little bits of uh, information that I want to know about my garden. It's kind of a mishmash of stuff. So I hope you're doing great and um, just let me get my chat popped up here. There we go. And last week we did this, uh, I called it first snow because it was kind of our first snow. We had a few flurries beforehand. Hey Dot, how are you? Dot, uh, can you message me in um, Instagram? I need your address, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and I just thought I would show you what we did on the weekend in our membership stream. This was for uh, budding artist and blooming artist and we did this cute little elf Christmas helper. Santa's helper and this is done in watercolor and gouache and I did a step-by-step -step and uh, it can be found on the membership and there's a link for that down below or if you see the join button beside the subscribe button under the video um, you can press on that and it'll give you all the information for those that are on um, iOS uh, Apple products um, I know you've had a hard time finding it for some reason it doesn't show up so I've actually started a patreon and it is also under Kathy Arbor so if you want to go through Patreon instead of YouTube. The same um, videos and links to the videos will all be there for you and it's the same price as here. So I just thought I would start that up because I have gotten a, quite a few people wanting to join but are having a real tough time finding it on YouTube. So just look, Kathy Arbor, Kathy with a K, A R B O U R, same as uh, what I have here on Ustream, or Ustream, uh, YouTube. And you can join there. Um, I've also added uh, an extra on the top tier, and that's the Blooming Artist tier, where once a month I will send you snail mail. Um, a 5 by 7 print of one of my uh, paintings. Um, but you'll have to leave your address. Um, give it to me on, uh, I have an email here, uh, or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook and give me your uh, address if you uh, would like um, to get these prints if you're in the Blooming Artist um, tier. <laughs> okay, so well, that all being said, and uh, oh, and the link is also in the um, description of the Patreon page also. So we did this, and for the top, we also did a, where did I put it? Um, top tier blooming artist on the week uh, on the weekend. It was actually a video. I didn't do a live stream because it was a holiday weekend. We did this page here, a journaling page, and this is a hidden journaling page. So I know there's a lot of you that love to do journaling, would like to um, write about whatever it is that you're doing your art about, but you don't want everyone seeing it, and then you end up having to put a great big old post it on top of your journaling areas so no one can read it. So I thought, well, why not make hidden areas? So this is what we did. And I showed you how to make these hidden areas so you can write about your day or write about the painting and you don't have to worry about having to show it to the world. So that's on the Blooming Artist um, tier, top tier. 
Uh, last week we did this cute little guy on Thursday. <laughs> I really like it. I think he turned out cute. So we painted these grumpy little birds again. And this was put on layers and layers of different types of collage, paint, stenciling, um, all kinds of stuff. So that is last Thursday. And um, once I'm done the stream, I'll leave a link on the top corner here, where a card, so you can go to that and watch that. All right, so this week, I thought, well, it's getting into the, it's almost December. So I associate December not only with Christmas, but with Cardinals. So I've got a link down below, and this is for everybody. It's not just for members, it's for everybody, for this here. So you can um, have the traceable and the reference photo on one page. I made it this size because I want to um, put it in this book. If you want, you can enlarge it. The, um, it's on Google Drive, downloadable, and you can change the size if you want. So you just have to print it out. <laughs> Thanks, Devin. So this is what we're going to do. And now you, I'm probably, I think I'll just paste this on. I'm going to try and do this on, this is just computer paper, plain copy, plain copy paper. So I'm going to try and do it so I can paste it onto this page. I don't want to um, be painting and doing line work on here because it could go through just because this is a uh, very inexpensive uh, sketchbook paper. So I'm going to leave it on here so you guys can see it and I think I will tape it on so it doesn't roll so much as far as um, curling. Awesome! You'd be able to do it, Devin. I know you. You'd be good at it. <laughs> They're cute. <laughs> you can, like, make them as fuzzy as you want. just going to use my watercolor that I have here in my palette. It's a mix of Daniel Smith, M. Graham, Windsor Newton, Core, and Da Vinci. I don't stick with one brand. I just pick the colors that I really like out of different brands and put them in a palette. Sometimes I change them up. I've got a, a whole bunch of other um, half pans or whole pans. And um, Depends what I'm doing, but uh, I've been using this palette for quite a while. Um, I may end up changing a few of them just to get something different. It's nice to change them up. I'll just have some coffee. <laughs> it's a cold day here. Now I'm not going to do a whole lot of uh, wet into wet because this is just copy paper. But you can, if you want to. Where did you put it, um, Dorothy? On Instagram, or...? Hopefully in Instagram. Okay, let me just check here. I see you're active, but I don't see anything. Nope, it's not there, Dot. 
I'll just uh, I'll send you a hi and then you'll know okay and it's Gibbs 79 is, is the one I've got See, did you send it on Facebook? Nope. I just sent you a hi on Instagram, so you can just reply back to that a message I sent you. That way I'll get it. All right. So this time, as you can see, the snow has some little bits of snow on it. And in order to see that snow, here I'll show you this big one. In order to see that snow, we're going to have to have a background color. So it doesn't have to be a real heavy color. And you can make it whatever you want. This is a photograph, so you can make it a little better than what's showing here. But make it a little darker than what the, the snow is. So in order to paint this snow, we don't want to draw on it. So we, um, you can either use um, Prisket or um, or just leave it. Don't paint. In those areas, that that that'll work too. So we'll paint the bird first, I think, and he's this beautiful, beautiful red, kind of an orangey, in between an orangey red and a blue red. There's kind of two um, shades in it. Like right in here is very orange, and then there's. The shading areas, in the top of the head, right here, right here, here, some in the tail, is more a blue-red. So, um, I'm going to use, let's wipe this off, I want a nice clean palette for this one. So I'm just going to wipe this, get this all cleaned up. Sorry, I'm not completely ready for you. I have a sick dog. My son just got home, so I didn't have much time to prepare. <laughs> I've been nurse to my dog. <laughs> All right. Got it, Jot. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm going to use, I have quite a few reds in my palette here, if you see. And this one here, the Scarlet Lake, is a gorgeous red. And then for the shadowed areas, I wanted a little bit more... Um, could almost go into a little bit of Quinn Magenta with the Scarlet Lake and that'll make it a little more on the blue or Alizarin Crimson would also um, be good. So we're, I'm going to use that, let's see, Scarlet Lake and that's by Windsor Newton. It's a beautiful color. Very bright but she is very bright too. And I'm just going to base coat her in. So most of this area, and I can still see my lines through this, as you can see it's on um, 
This is just plain old copy paper, computer paper, printer paper, whatever you want to call it. Um, just don't go in the areas where the snow is. You want to keep those clean. So I've got a nice fine point on my brush. Now you can do this on watercolor paper and you don't have to worry too much about it. But I just want to show you guys you don't have to do this, use your watercolors, on just watercolor paper. You can play with your watercolor. Now, you have to make sure you don't mix them up with the snow and the tail and the stems. So I'm going to take a heat gun and heat this after I get this first coat on. That's the only thing when using this type of um, paper is you have to dry in between each application. Because if you don't, your paper is going to start to degrade and fall apart and peel or pill. And you can also use uh, colored pencils on this if you want. You don't have to put the whole layer in with watercolor. You can use colored pencils too. Hey Kim, good to see you. Okay, so I think I'm going to do the bark of those twigs. So it's kind of spotty. Um, so I think I'll just use, uh, looks like a dark raw umber, and then a little bit of a, it's almost a dirty color. You could almost use a dirty palette color for little bits and pieces, all these little areas that are spotted. Or you could use a um, gouache on top of that too, if you don't want to do it in watercolor you could use gouache. So I have some raw umber here. Or not raw umber, burnt umber, sorry. I always say that. And I think I'm gonna darken it with some ultramarine blue. And that'll gray it up a little bit. Just darkens it. Makes it a real nice color. And then I want to be sure to get not the snow but just the um, twig. And you can uh, do it in patches if you want to make it a little bit blotchy looking. Just don't paint the snow. That's all. You could also add a little bit of another color. Make it yours. The, the photograph is just for reference. You can change up whatever you want in it. Colors, background. It's just a reference.
I may go back with um, marker, on our, like a pen marker, do some more lines in that, a uh, jelly roll pen in white maybe, just play. This is your sketchbook, so you're allowed to experiment without any criticizing yourself, because this is how we learn. To put the critic away and just have a free time of playing. There's no rules when you're playing. You just experiment. Hi, Whispering Cauldron. Um, I don't remember what your name or do you just like going by Whispering Cauldron? <laughs> my, uh, my memory's not great for names. It's Carol. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get some of this alizarin crimson here. And it's nice dark. Okay, I'll try and remember, but <laughs> I'm not promising anything. <laughs> I'm terrible. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that, um, what was it again, Scarlet Lake with that. I'm just going to gradually, I'm going to actually dry that first, because it's still pretty wet. I have a piece of salt underneath there. Oh well. Let's play. So this is fairly dark. The wing area is a little more on the crimson side. This part in the back area of his wing. Then there's little wisps of, of this fur here. And then I'm going to put, there's a little bit, I'm going to just barely put some right here. That's it. Just touch it. And then in the eye, there's some. It's a little darker. Right in here. I'm gonna I think I'll spot it. Make it a little bit spotty looking. And the top of his head here in his crown. It's a little bit spotted too. Maybe a bit in there. And just along the cheek here where the black starts to come in. I'm going to spot it around there. Right here. Okay. Just under there. Maybe maybe just a dab under His feet are right in here. Just flicking it. And it's fairly deep in here. Let's get a little bit more of this. A little bit more water.
tail feathers are fairly dark. Not completely though. More of that crimson. Gonna add a little bit of that crimson lake. What was it? No, scarlet lake. To that. Just to this area here. This is a little bit on the pale side, so it needs a little bit more darkening under the tail. Maybe in here. I'm just gonna put a little bit more. kind of dry brushed. Each coat you put on, you still see what's underneath. Hey Brenda, good to see you. And then I got this very dark black, but I don't have black in my palette, so I'm going to use some um, Let's see, this is French Ultramarine Blue. And some Burnt Umber. want it real dark. And that will make kind of a black when you get the right amount. And then I'm just going to dab in, just make sure there's no droplets in the, around. That should be darker. Let's see. I'm going to add some Payne's Gray to this. Make it a little darker. There. A little thicker. And we'll just dab in around his beak. I'm not going to do any of his beak. His beak's going to be red too. But I'm going to change it just a little bit so it's a little different color than his feathers. And it's going to be a little bit on the um, more on the orangey side. Just a few little dabs around there. And in his eye, it's black too. Um, then kind of a dark brown around the iris. It's not black. Okay, and then that dark brown, burnt umber, there's the lines in his um, wing area that are darker. So you can just do a bunch of streaks in those areas where it's really, really dark. And in his tail feathers too. There's some really dark areas. Right under there. And a little bit more on his just do a few tabs here and there where it's dark dark. in a little bit, some water. So you just play.
see what the paint will do for you. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit orange, cadmium orange to that scarlet. And do the beak in that color. Just a little bit more. And then we'll dry it. Let's see what we got. Hey, Colleen! Awesome uh, <laughs> stuff you had on your stream. I'm glad you're not as you're not feeling too bad. A little better than what you thought you were gonna feel. It's always a good thing. I'm just adding a little bit of that. ultramarine and umber combination around the side of his beak just a bit to kind of add a little bit of shading in there. I think I'll put a little bit more in here, the shaded areas. It's dark, dark. So you just basically uh, put some in, let it dry, see what you got. Slap happy. <laughs> well, at least it's happy. <laughs> Right up. Maybe I'm going to use some of this umber and ultramarine color in some of the branch work. Darken some areas just to give it another color instead of just two shades. It is very fairly dark. I'm just dabbing. So it's kind of uh, just leave some of the white areas, and then you can uh, we'll mix a little bit of maybe some sienna, dirty sienna color. For those white areas because we don't want them white because the snow is going to be white so and this would be a really nice card actually if you want to try it on watercolor or you could do one on watercolor and then scan it and use it for cards Or take it to Staples or whatever office place that will do a bunch of scans and prints for you. That would work too. Alright, 
And I'm gonna take some of that, let's see, maybe yellow ochre. And I'm gonna mix some of that brownish color, so it's kind of dirty looking. I'm going over top of those white areas on the branch, not the snow. I don't want yellow snow. <laughs> Just a little here and there. Wherever you see some white, you can throw that on there. It just gives it a little bit of extra. Hey Michelle, good to see you. Okay, so instead of painting the snow, we're going to paint around the snow. So pick a color that you want. This is kind of blue and purples with a little bit of, looks like yellow in there. Um, you could mix some green in there if you wanted to. So it looks like there's bushes behind. I think I might do, let's see, some yellow or um, blue here cobalt blue mix a bunch because I'm gonna have a large enough area so I want a quite a bit so I don't have to remake it and maybe some permanent green Permanent Sap Green by Windsor Newton. Put that one there. And maybe some yellow. And this is going to be very, very, very. Hi, Kathy. Thanks. Very light. So I want it really watered down. I don't want a lot of color in my background, just a bit. And I'm going to concentrate more around the snow area. So make sure your paper is good and dry. And just paint around that snow area. And you don't have to do um, the whole area all at once. You could just do bits and pieces. The reason why I pick green is because it's a complement to red. So it's going to look nice together. Um, let's mix a bit of yellow with that. We want different colors, just not green. So I'm going to go over here and put a little bit of this light green in. Now, when you're doing this type of thing when there's a, a set uh, this branch is separating these two areas of the background there is this I hate to call it a, a rule but um, the mind's eye prefers to see this color that I'm putting here continue over past this area so if you put a little bit of that past it, it looks more cohesive. Um, so don't stop and then and then uh, use a different color on the opposite side. So let's say let's say we got the blue here. I want it fairly. And we're bringing it around the snow because we don't want to paint the snow. And it can be different shades or more water in it. Because I've got it there, I want to put it in here too. So wherever it's touching the boundary of that snow and branch, I want it to be continuate, continuing into 
the opposite side. And I just take it down. Maybe it incorporates into the other color. It's called a tangent um, when you come to a cross between two areas that you're coloring. Uh, let's put some blue in here. And then the blue up here. Maybe some maybe this green in here. And I'm gonna put some green in here. So I'm coming around that. area. Now I do have green right across from it, so that worked out. And then I want to add, I need some more yellow. My yellow's gone dirty. So let's water that down a bit. And let's put just yellow in here. in here and there just have to pay attention to your pattern so you don't end up putting snow all yellow <laughs> okay let's do some more green in here more in there. Take some more blue. I'm going to put some blue in here. Those white areas. I don't want um, a whole lot of hard line either. So Kind of mix it. Bright yellow. More yellow in there. Blue. My blue's kind of getting yucky. Let's put some blue in here. There's my snow. And let's put some more blue in here. water, mix it in. Mm. Now this is going to dry a whole lot lighter, but that's fine. I don't want it really dark. It may look really dark right now, but once it dries it's going to be quite a bit lighter than what it is now. Okay. So let's dry that. Hey, Jilly. Kathleen.
You just make sure it's good and dry before you do any pencil or pen work on it. Still some wet areas. Almost dry. Thanks, Kathleen. Alright, it's not quite dry, but I'm not going to work on the um, background right now. So, because this is just uh, coffee paper, I'm going to take out my um, colored pencils and just finish this I don't think I'm going to put any um, black uh, pen on it this time I'm going to try just colored pencils So you kind of have to match up whatever you're going to be coloring with your watercolor color. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. So what I like to do is just do flicks. So this is a little bit darker than what I got, but it's the same uh, hue. So I'm just looking at my reference, seeing where the feathers, which way the feathers are, are going. And I'm just going to do a little bit of fuzziness on her head, or his head, I guess. Wouldn't be a her, because they're not as colorful. And just leave the highlights. little areas you can put some flicks where the feathers would be coming out because he's all puffed up trying to keep warm and it'll be a little darker underneath
little darker under here. Now, if you have watercolor paper, you don't have to use the pencils. You could just add more watercolor, but a little bit thicker consistency. Okay, it would be fairly dark because it's underneath, so it's going to be shadowed. And this is a little bit darker in here, his wing. I'll put some um, black or dark, almost purple in there. Same with here, it could be some You're not going to see all his um, directional paths, but you'll see some of them, of his feathers, that is. You just put them in. So he's kind of on the side and he's looking the other direction. So his feathers on his breast would be, this would be the center part right here. Usually down the center of, of their breast, they're, it kind of has a little line in it where the breastbone is, where it separates and goes opposite directions. Uh, I like to show that. You don't have to put them put it all in either. Just want to put a bit, that's fine. Um, take it off here. So I can show you. And then you can get a nice deep arc Almost like plum color would be good. Let's see what I got here. I'm pretty sure I have a black plum somewhere. What's this one? Black cherry here. This one will do by Prisma. And let's see if it'll be, yep, just dark enough. Just to put a little bit more shading in the back areas. Where it's speckled with a little bit of black. It's fairly dark around. And it kind of speckles out a little bit under the black area into the red. So it's not quite red, but it's not quite black. Same with around the edge. You can speckle that too. His eye, and then kind of there's a bit of a line on the side. And up his crown, his head here. A bit. A little bit on the back too. And this eye will be fairly dark. They have kind of a, um, I guess it's his eyelid, it has a lighter shade. Don't forget to do that. And a little bit. 
lighter or darker there. Some of his wing feathers show. Not a lot though. And you do see some of those lines. So you can put some of those in. Um, separating his wing. We'll have all of them in though. And down his tail there's some separate lines that you'll see. Oop. watercolor look like. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jilly. That's sweet of you to say. Like that. It's too dark there. Mm. Let's see. Maybe a little bit shadow around the base here where the snow and his feathers are be a little bit shadowed because of the the way he's sitting and I'm gonna just put a few marks in that breast area where that fur would or fur <laughs> feathers would be separating just a few and a few in here And a little bit of a highlight, and I'm going to use cream. Just a bit of a highlight there. And the snow area, you could put some shadow in, and it would be in, more in a steel blue color. So something with a little bit of grayish blue and just along some of these uh, edges you could put a little bit of shadow in there wouldn't be much you don't have to just along the bottom you probably won't even see it on camera you could do it a little darker if you wanted to but see uh, darker gray this darker yeah. I just kind of scribble along the bottom part It's rough looking. And then I'm going to take a highlighter. Posca. Where did I put them? Oh, there it is. And just go along the top edge where that line from the pattern is. I printed this with a, um, what do you call it, laser print, so there's no erasing it, but I can just put that on. And it'll be more like a highlight then. Shake it more. On in if you do a paint on. Remember. Oh, thanks, Devin. Yeah. If you do uh, a paint along, don't forget to on ing or not ing Instagram.
put um, paint along with Kathy Harper so I can see it. You could use Posca or gouache for this part. I do have some gouache. Maybe I should use some of that. This works though. It doesn't have to be clean looking. Um, there could be some shadowed areas, so if it's not covering it completely, that's fine. It's just a bit of shadow in it. Uh, there is the traceable for everybody that you don't have to be a member. A member. Member. <laughs> Can't talk today. Um, it's in the description already. It's a Google Drive download. And you can enlarge it if you want a bigger or just keep it as it is. So I thought this would be appropriate for this time of the year. Since they're all starting to come to the feeders and see what we're offering. Oh good, just in time. can we do with it? Maybe could add I'm going to add some scratching on the bark I think just here and there some scribbles just to give it a little more texture looks like a, this branch has got a lot of um, it's either dead stuff in it or the bark is very unusual. So you can just do that. It's funny, just little things like this add to it. You wouldn't think it would make much of a difference, but in the long run, after you're done, you'll see it does adds a lot to your paintings. So play with stuff. See what you like. Show you it in a minute. So we'll be doing Thursday, uh, we're going to be doing a cow <laughs> and Get your jelly prints ready if you're going to paint. It's a paint along with uh, Colleen and Kathy, and they have um, YouTube channels also. Kathy did some uh, jelly prints this morning. Um, someone can put their links in the, in the um, chat. And we're going to be doing a uh, paint along of a cow done in paper piecing from a book of um, Elizabeth, oh, what's her last name? Elizabeth, I haven't got the book here, can't think of her name. Paper, pe paper painting, I think is the book called. 
yeah, it's an extra pop and contrast. Just gives it a little extra. That's what I always found with when I do art is, you know, you'll you'll be doing stuff and you'll think, oh, that won't make much of a difference. I'm not going to bother with it. But then you decide to do it and like you surprise yourself every time. Wow, did I ever change it? So don't make shortcuts in your art. Enjoy the process and try things. If you're hurrying, you're not going to get the full effect of what is possible. So just play. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Colleen. Okay, I'll show you. So, see how the just adds a little, little bit more to it. Not much, but put together, it, it um, changes your painting. Okay, so I'll just peel this off. started. Sometimes it's hard to get them started. Here. Um, Kathy, will you make a snowman again from Between the Vines this year? Yep, I will. It's going to be this month. And I'll put the um, traceable in for everyone to use. I'm not sure which one, but we will be making one. Thanks, Michelle, for telling me that. There's our painting. And today is uh, 11.30.21. Wow. The last one for November. So we'll put, where did I put my book now? Oh, I got my pen. pencils on. So then I can just glue that in here.
Ja. It's nice to have these. Um, it was nice to see Kathy's um, sketches today in her sketchbook. I love that. Seeing people's sketches. Uh, okay. Piece of you who, and that was a um, <laughs> fibs. Uh, sketch prompts that everyone was doing. I think we were putting it on Twitter. I actually have them in my book here too. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see. I can't remember how many there was. I don't, I think we did a few, a couple months, but I'm not sure. I'll show you what that's what this book originally was going to be for. And then, uh, then um, we had to take turns doing the prompts every week. <laughs> and we kind of, kind of slacked and eventually it fell. <laughs> we didn't do it anymore. So there's that one. And I'm almost done this book. I only have a few pages left. Should last me till the end of December. And then I can start a new book. That's when we'll be done. I'm going to I'm going through all my all through my how to draw books and post notes on pages to use as well. Oh awesome! Good idea. Yeah, we all have these books and, you know, you look at them for a few weeks and then you put them in your shelf and then you forget about them. We should do, we should start doing a prompt um, list of how to draw something. I've got a ton of different reference books. If you want, I can start that in the new year. Um, how to draw. Let's draw. Or, and then... Um, It'll be like a 20 minute draw time or something. Was it that, De um, Devin? Okay, so this originally started in my old house, <laughs> my feet. This is what a sketchbook thing is for, for notes, for. That was a Danielle Donaldson thing I was taking. Um, contour drawing. That was just um, plein air drawing my backyard. Different things in my... So this was 2018, this one. Okay. I think this was also just drawing things that's around me. So there was some cookies on my counter. I drew those. That was fall. So I just drew my feet with the leaves around. I was off my back porch in November 18th, 16th. There was still trees, uh, leaves on the trees with some snow on the balcony. And this is where it started, the fib sketch a day. <laughs> the boot. So this was a boot that I drew. I used the watercolor and pen. So we started in December 1st. Okay, so then it was pretty shoes. Yeah, that was it. Pretty shoes you wish you could wear. It was sentences like um, we just didn't put a word. Sometimes we did, but there was also sentences that we could do. Oh, thanks, Colleen. So that was the shoe I can't wear anymore because the dog ate it. <laughs> I always like to put a little humor in them. Just not the word. 
um, sweater was the word. So I did a hands knitting a sweater, <laughs> and it was the word. <laughs> it's kind of fun if you can try and think of stuff outside the box. Um, coat, I did my dog wearing a coat. <laughs> it's Coco. Pants, well, we had to put something interesting in the pants. <laughs> so I did a nice six pack. Um, makeup day, makeup day was whatever you wanted. So I actually literally used makeup day. So it was two kids that were fighting and the teachers saying they have to make up. <laughs> Uh, relax and watch streams you have missed was one. That's me with a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sphere. Am I back? Can you see me? I don't know why they're 